Good morning. It's good to welcome you to our AGM this morning where we're going to be sharing a little bit more about the vision and the resourcing of our union. I do hope that you had a chance to join us last night, um, either at the time or on catch up already. Uh, it was a really amazing evening, very inspiring and encouraging. And uh, if you haven't already seen it, I'd encourage you to go to the Assembly YouTube um, site and watch it on catch up. It's great to be joined this morning by Alastair Mitchell-Baker, who's here in the studio with us, and also uh, John Levick, our treasurer, will be joining us later. And on video, um, we will have uh, uh, our president, Yinka Aiken, and Jeff Colmer will be joining us by video later. So just before we kind of get into things, uh, we want to start with prayer, and Alastair's going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Alastair. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and for your faithfulness to us as a Baptist family over this last year. And Lord, we pray that you be with us and help us to discern your mind through this AGM. And uh, Lord, that you would too be with us this day of this assembly, that your Holy Spirit would inspire us and guide us as we seek to learn, hear from you and to serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before we move into the resolutions, I just want to give you um, some more information about the voting side of things. Um, we're using Slido for voting. So if you're a voting delegate, please can you go to slido.com. That's S-L-I-D-O dot com. And if you enter the code 320702, then you'll be able to get into the area with the resolutions. Um, if you're able to do that on another device, that would be really helpful because you won't be kind of trying to juggle things. It'll be a lot easier. Before I hand over to Alistair to take us through the bulk of our um, resolutions this morning, I need to ask you to affirm and appoint Alistair and John in their respective roles. This is something we do every year. Now, all members of Assembly are eligible to vote for these two resolutions. And just to remind you, that it includes representatives of churches, um, accredited ministers, members of Baptist Union Council, representatives of colleges, association representatives and personal members of the union. So first, I invite you to cast your vote with regard to John Levick serving as our treasurer for a further year and the resolution will be coming up on Slido now. And there it is. So if you could vote please using Slido, I can see your responses and that will be good. Thank you. We'll just leave that for a few moments while the votes are coming in. Thank you. We're voting on Slido if you've just recently joined us. So if you go to slido.com and you're a voting delegate, you can vote in this and other resolutions. Thank you. I think I can report that uh, John is overwhelmingly reaffirmed uh, in this role. Thank you very much. Secondly, I want to invite you to cast your vote uh, for Alastair Mitchell-Baker as the moderator of the trustee board until the 31st of August of this year, 2021. Alastair is going to be finishing his term as moderator this summer and we are in, uh, engaged in a discernment process about appointing his uh, successor. But the resolution is on the screen now, so please do vote using Slido. Um, hoping you're getting the hang of this now. Again, we'll wait a few moments while people vote. Thank you. Again, thank you very much for voting. Alistair, you're uh, overwhelmingly um, reaffirmed in your role and we're just very grateful for all that you have contributed to our union thus far and just look forward to working with you to the last on this. Thank you for that. Um, while I'm on 
line here and speaking to you. Can I just remind you that as a union, we're often looking for people who can serve as trustees and in other volunteer roles. Um, opportunities are shared openly on the Baptist Times area of our website and also via social media. We are particularly keen to maintain and develop the diversity and skill set of our board. So if you think you have something to offer, we'd be delighted to hear from you and to talk more with you about that. I'm going to hand over to Alistair now, who's going to take us through the other items on our agenda. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, so um, it's been a real privilege to serve as the moderator of Bugby uh, over the last three years. I get uh, a unique position, I think, to see the life across our family. Um, and the annual report, uh, which if you haven't got a hard copy of, you can download a copy from the website. Um, it gives a, just a glimpse of the life that goes on across the whole family. Um, I would uh, encourage you to read it. It's been a really challenging year for all of us, hasn't it? Um, but it's been amazing to see the contribution that each part of our family, of our movement has made. And, I, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, and really want to pass on my thanks on behalf of all the Bugby trustees to everyone who's been playing their role. That includes ministers, staff, volunteers, trustees, chaplains, across all of our churches, colleges, the regional Baptist associations, the pension trustees, the retired Baptist ministers housing organization, uh, the Baptist Union Corporation, and indeed the specialist teams who are based here uh, in Didcot. My thanks to everybody. And it's been really interesting over the last couple of years. We've been learning how to work together better as a movement. Uh, we're still learning, but I'm confident that as we learn together to work, each playing our own roles, we'll see our Baptist churches and our Baptist movement able to really serve our neighbours, our communities, our nations and see them impacted with the love of God. It's so exciting to see that happen. I'm going to hand over now to John Levick, our treasurer, who serves us so faithfully, uh, who's going to present the finances to us. Thank you, John. Good morning and thank you for your support in reappointing me as treasurer. Uh, I feel honoured to serve you. 2020 has been described in various ways. Challenging, different, worrying, uncertain. These can all be applied to our finances as Baptists together. The income from our home mission appeal shows this. In April, we saw a big dip as the first lockdown came in and all of us were unaware of how we would move forward. I want to thank you for your response in May and June when we saw the giving come back and this was then sustained until the final quarter. However, the last quarter saw a decline when compared with 2019. I am aware a minority of churches give to home mission at the end of the year out of what they have left and the financial pressures of 2020 have reflected particularly in the December giving. I also give thanks for so many of you who give systematically and regularly during the year. Our income for the last quarter of 2020 was hit on various fronts. Our interest income fell as bank interest rates fell to 0.1% and the rates we could get on our deposits also fell. There was also a fall in dividend income as companies cut dividends, sometimes on instruction from the government. The low interest rates also affected the Baptist Union Corporation income. Legacies are a very unpredictable and hit a low in 2020. In part, this reflects both the slowness in the legal process of selling properties and delays in getting probate. 
I'm pleased to report that we became aware of a legacy at the end of January 2021, which means we have already exceeded budget for this year. I remind you that we offer a free will writing service and ask that as you consider your wills, that you also consider leaving a gift to the Baptist Union. Remember, giving to charity can reduce your overall inheritance tax rate. Most of the expenditure is in the allocations to associations. These move in line with income. Other expenditure has been controlled and opportunities for savings are always being sought. Because of the fall in income in the last quarter, there was a deficit for the year, which has been funded from reserves. The balance sheet shows that our unrestricted reserves are sound, but we continue to carry the long-term loan from retired Baptist Minister's housing organization for the pension fund family solution, which will be repaid in the long term from surpluses within the RBMHO. Within the balance sheet, Baptist Union Corporation deposits from churches totaled £54.7 million at the end of the year, up from £54.1 million at the end of 19, 2019. These deposits from churches and associations show that some churches have fared well during the lockdowns and have not had to withdraw on their reserves. Our reserves allowed us to set aside a million pounds for help to churches during 2020. We have been able to help 31 churches which would otherwise have run out of cash. We have provided grants to all churches which applied and have met the criteria. The main feature of these churches are a heavy reliance on letting of their premises for income and congregations which are not tech savvy and rely heavily on cash offerings at services. We've also supported 22 people. In addition, through the Baptist Union Corporation, we have also given help to churches with loans with either giving interest free periods or repayment holidays. Despite the help we have given, I remain concerned that there are churches which will struggle financially as we come out of lockdowns and their futures are uncertain. I'm pleased to report that the pension fund, which has been a major concern over the past decade, is no longer such a concern. Good progress has been made in improving the funding. Whilst the deficit is much reduced, eliminating it does not remove risk of future deficits. So we are now focused on reaching the buyout figures, which will remove all risk from the Baptist family. We continue to work closely with the pension trustees who are independent from us. We completed the 2019 triannual valuation in mid-year, and this has allowed the end of the end of deficit contributions to be brought forward to 2026. As a contribution to the financial strains of COVID, the deficit contributions were halved for the second half of 2020. We were able to do this despite pressure from the pensions regulator for organisations to maintain funding for their pension funds because of the greatly improved funding position in our own fund. Responding to COVID has been a major drain on resources in 2020, but it has not stopped us looking to the future. We are conscious that we are not seeing millennials and younger generations being called to ministry as we would want. A major factor is funding through training and our poor support is causing some to train with other denominations where better funding is available. These are two areas we want to provide funding. Firstly, internships to provide opportunities nationally for younger people to encourage and explore whether ministerial calling is for them. Internships are already happening in various parts of the country, 
but we want to extend this nationally. Secondly, we have a group looking at funding for ministry. At the moment, we have some people who cannot train for ministry because insufficient funding is available for them. The colleges are already providing some help, but do not have the resources to fully meet the financial needs of all students. These two areas will be wrapped up in a wider review of the allocation of our financial resources, including the amounts allocated to associations, both for their running costs and grants to churches. This review in itself will not increase our income, which is a major issue, but we'll look to address some of the challenges within the existing model. In all of this, I want to give thanks to Richard Wilson and his team who manage all of these financial areas, and also to the treasurers and finance teams in our associations and colleges. They do a lot of unseen but important work for the kingdom. I want to finish by going back to the home mission appeal figures. We continue to see a small but steady decline in giving year on year, which puts pressure on our finances. In 2020, giving in some association areas declined, but the average giving per member increased, reflecting the fact that the pressures are not just financial. I make no apologies for repeating my message from previous years that the slow decline in income will mean we have 20% fewer financial resources in 10 years time, if average inflation is at the government target of 2% per annum. I don't want to finish on a negative note and want to thank you that despite the shortfall in 2020, we have been able to finance all we had planned. I close with 2 Corinthians 6 verses 1 to 4 as per the message. Companions, as we are in this work with you, we beg you, Please don't squander one bit of this marvellous life God has given us. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time. The day you needed me, I was there to help. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work by showing up late, throwing a question mark over everything we're doing. Our work is God's servant's as God's servants gets validated or not in the details. People are watching us as we stay at our post, alertly, unswervingly, in hard times, tough times, bad times. Thank you all and God bless you. Well, thank you very much, John. And uh, can I add my thanks to yours, to for all those that serve us behind the scenes uh, in looking after our finances. And uh, John, you do an amazing job. Thank you. So we kind of come now to uh, a resolution uh, concerning the unincorporated uh, association of Bugby. Uh, this uh, Resolution can be voted on by organization, representatives of organisational members uh, of the Baptist Union only, so slightly different from the earlier vote. Uh, so that's obviously churches, associations, colleges, um, and indeed personal members of the union from before 2007. So this resolution is uh, going to be, you can see it clearly on Slido, but I'm going to read it out just because you won't be able to see everything on the screen at the moment. Um, so this, this is the text of the resolution we're about to vote on, on Slido as before. So, in pursuance of part one, clause nine, and part two, clause 13 of the Constitution, the Baptist Union Council proposes that a resolution be passed in the following form. That the constitution of the union be abrogated in its entirety and replaced with a constitution in the form provided with the notice of the resolution 
subject to any consent or amendments required by the Charity Commission. That's our resolution. We basically want to replace uh, the old, um, very complex, more complex constitution with a simple form. So I hope that is clear. We're going to now open Slido. Uh, and please, if you'd like to vote, simple uh, yes or no, that would be great. And we can see your votes coming in here. Thank you. We'll give a few uh, moments for you to vote. That would be uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, we can see the votes coming in on Slido. I'm hoping the technology is working for you. Just give another moment or two. Super. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm pleased to say that that resolution has a, had 100% a uh, support. Uh, with uh, everybody voting in favour of it and at the moment we've got uh, over 120 uh, votes in favour of it. So thank you very much, that resolution is passed. So uh, that allows us to return to the CIO meeting and uh, I'm pleased to say uh, we finished the formalities for our bit. I'm going to hand over to Lynn. I just want to, as I hand over to Lynn, take the opportunity to thank Lynn for her leadership of our family through the last year. Um, she has uh, led us amazingly and our specialist teams through a really difficult year. Um, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Alastair. I'm sure you'll agree with me that 2020 has been a year of huge challenges and beautiful opportunities. As I've watched and prayed and offered leadership over this past year, what I have witnessed most definitely is the maturity of Baptists Together as a movement. I have seen a movement that is spiritually mature. And this has been demonstrated, I think, primarily in our desire to pray and our commitment to praying together. Nationally, we've shared in over 60 prayer broadcasts and regionally, I know many prayer events have been going on, and locally too. Prayer has been breaking out all over the place. It's been a priority for us and a real blessing. And I am praying that the Lord will continue to deepen our commitment to seeking him in prayer, which I think is so important as we move forward, uh, to keep waiting on God, to keep seeking him, and to keep in step with his spirit. <clears throat> I've also seen a movement that is maturing in relationships. The well-worn paths that we have carefully nurtured over the years with our communities have readily provided open doors and clear channels for God's love and blessing to, serve, uh, to flow as we've served and blessed our communities through this crisis as best we can. And that has just been amazing to see. And I just love that all the variety of what that's looked like all over the country. But the relationships between us across Baptist Together have been strengthened too, I think, haven't they? As we've supported and encouraged and inspired each other on the way. I've been struck that you know, when one is feeling a bit down, another gets alongside is better. And then later, it'll all be different. We, we've really encouraged and walked together alongside each other. And again, that has been amazing to see. And I think the advice and the guidance that has been so wonderfully provided by our specialist teams has been one tangible demonstration of the fact that we are stronger together and that we need each other and each one playing their part. We help and uh, equip each other um, to glorify God and to further his kingdom together. Importantly too, I have seen maturity in mission Flexibility, creativity, innovation has been evident again and again as I have seen us working in our communities, of working out what it means to be church in a changing environment. Um, and I think we've been able to be that responsive missional movement that is so much part of who we are. I think we've been willing to be blown along by God's Holy Spirit even in the midst of the storm, somehow, when it feels like we've been blown from all angles, we've been able to be attentive to God's spirit and keep in step with the spirit in the midst of everything. 
I think as Baptists together, we have truly been beacons of prayer and beacons of hope wherever God has placed us. And I know that for some of you, that's been recognised uh, through civic uh, awards and things as well. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's the impact on individual people's lives, on communities, on our nation that is so important. And that is just wonderful. And thank you for that. As Alistair pointed out earlier, I just want to encourage you to take a look at our annual review. It, it really is a great read. It's packed with stories and information from 2020, and I think it will really inspire and encourage you for the days ahead. So can I commend that to you now? Now we come to that moment in the AGM when it's time to honour President Yinka for all the ways that he's offered us leadership over this past year and also to induct Vice President Jeff Colmer as our president for the year to come. Now, some of you will know that in recent weeks, Jeff has been receiving treatment in hospital. And so we recorded this part of the session in advance uh, so that that would be most helpful for him uh, during his treatment. I'm delighted to say that Jeff is now back home again and uh, is making progress. And it is wonderful to say that Jeff will be joining us uh, tomorrow in the morning worship so that we can pray for him live uh, at the start of his presidency. But for now, as I say, we're going to watch the video uh, that we recorded earlier as we induct Jeff as president. Thank you. When we come together, we want to honour those who serve in leadership amongst us. And so I want to take this opportunity for us to honour our president. Our president serves for one year and offers their gifts of leadership to inspire us and help to focus on our shared vision of growing healthy churches in relationship for God's mission. Our president is someone who offers spiritual wisdom and helps us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. They're also a symbol of unity and alongside myself as General Secretary, they represent us in so many different ways. This past year, Yinka Aiken has served us brilliantly and brought us much encouragement and challenge with his theme, How Do We Grow From Here? President Yinka, it's certainly not been the year that you had anticipated, but please tell us more about what has encouraged you and challenged you during your presidential year. Uh, thank you, Lynn. It's been, um, it's been an extraordinarily encouraging year. Um, as you say, um, it's been a privilege to serve as president of the Baptist Union uh, in what have been extraordinary times. I mean, I stood on a platform of evangelism, as everybody knows. Um, I believe that uh, it's important for us as a movement uh, to be absolutely outward looking in proclamation of the gospel and to bring as many people as we can into fellowship with Jesus Christ. And so that's what I focused on. Of course, as you say, world events left me having to represent our Baptist family in spaces I had not previously attempted to occupy. So I found myself speaking to uh, shadow government ministers and others uh, working in government about issues around Black Lives Matter and injustice uh, for people of color in our nation. Nevertheless, I, I did stay focused on my commitment and um, with lockdown, uh, decided that what we needed to do was, as everybody else did, get the training that we provided for those who wanted to uh, learn how to grow a community uh, to join us online. And we, we did that every month. Um, we had two evenings a, a month where we coached different people from different uh, groups uh, on things uh, like uh, pioneering. Uh, so we had uh, art as well. I mean, um, Jenny Whitfield, part of our community here, uh, was coaching people on how to start up a new uh, art uh, community. Um, Alistair Mitchell Baker, who some of you knew, uh, took a lead um, in helping uh, churches or individuals that wanted to learn how to get into healing ministry, how to step into that. We had uh, a, a, a pack around family and how to evangelize as a family unit. And Gareth and Mitchell Owen um, helped uh, with that as well. And I took the lead on the pioneering of uh, churches or, or new communities or groups. Um, uh, with all the packs, I mean, the, the website is still going to be staying live. Uh, how do we go from here? The packs are still available on there. And we probably will run another session for those who want to engage with any of these things uh, later on uh, next year. 
we're still looking at how we can gather the millennials together because we believe that our future is here with us now and leadership from that generation of people is vital for our Baptist family. And so we, we uh, were planning on pulling together millennials across the movement later on in the year. We had 69 uh, churches signing up um, from different parts of the country. And uh, we had three regional team leaders that joined us uh, as, uh, on some of the coaching sessions in the evenings. Uh, I want to express huge thanks to all those who helped uh, with the delivery of this uh, uh, program involving you know, many teams and many people across the country. I'm still going to uh, fulfill my promise to do an evangelistic uh, a tour around the country, evangelistic evenings, uh, for those who signed up for it. But of course, because of lockdown, we couldn't actually go and visit people and, and hold evangelistic outreaches in their churches. But we've promised those clusters. I think we have 29 signed up so far uh, who uh, want to put on an evening with different churches in the area, uh, do an outreach to reach out to the lost. And so I'm still going to fulfill that commitment. And in fact, I've extended it and said, I'm going to give 100 days over the next three years for churches that are desperate to put something on that, that they can invite people in. And so um, uh, uh, as with all of these things, I uh, was astonished at some of the testimonies that came back. And I was really encouraged by some of the churches that took part, uh, Goldale Baptist Church and other churches that uh, felt, you know, you know what, we, we need to learn from one another and we need to grow together. And there'll be a video of testimonies that will be, uh, that will be accompanying uh, this uh, reflection. All in all, I think, uh, in the year that we've just gone through, it's been a huge privilege to serve the Baptist family. I'm encouraged to see what the regional team leaders are doing. Uh, we see a whole host of activity and engagement uh, with the churches who are all seeking to do mission where they are, to bring the kingdom of God where they are. I think as a Baptist family, we should be proud of, uh, of who we are, ab about the prophetic voice that we hold in the nation. And I think, and I still believe, that a renewal is coming to the Baptist family. And I just can't wait to see that happen. So it's been a privilege to serve. Thank you to those who put their faith in me, their trust in me, and uh, who felt it was God's will that I serve in this year. I think we can safely say, um, given what's happened in the year, uh, that uh, it seemed to have been perfect timing. Um, in terms of uh, the future, and uh, I continue to be available to serve the Baptist family as the leadership team uh, feel or would like, I, th I think there's a lot more that we can do uh, as a Baptist family to bring the kingdom into our neighborhoods and the places where we live. So thank you for putting your trust in me. Thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to step up. It's great to know that we're, we're part of a very wide, diverse Baptist family. And I think our church leaders and members and the wider diaspora of Baptists are, uh, can be proud of who God has made us and called us to be together. Thank you. Thank you, Yinka. Well, as, as we said at the beginning, this certainly wasn't a year like we expected, but you know, it's typical God, isn't it, that you were the right person for the right season, uh, not for the reasons we thought maybe entirely, but for the right season. You, you have, as you said, been uniquely positioned uh, to give voice to God's heart for justice, um, particularly racial justice. And, and we thank God for that, you know, in our discerning, we discern in our best of ability, don't we? But God is at work and we thank God for that. Yinka, you are a man of faith and hope and love. And we've seen this this year and we've seen your servant heartedness. Um, you are such an encourager and I've seen you definitely encouraging individuals and churches uh, and groups that you meet with and we've really really appreciated that. We've also very much valued your prophetic and prayerful ministry and particularly the inspiration and prayer that you've offered to ministers and leaders. I know that you've been to quite a few um, ministers conferences and groups and uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for that. I know that's been really appreciated. You talked about your heart for evangelism and church planting. And again, we just really want to say how much we've appreciated your enthusiasm and your passion uh, for evangelism and mission and, and your courage and your faith in that. And uh, I'm sure the fruit of that will continue uh, to work its way out in our movement. Uh, and, and as you say, it's not the end, is it? More will happen through it. Yinka, you've been so generous, generous of yourself and of your time. And I just want you to know that you have been a real blessing to our movement. 
it wouldn't be right for me to say thank you to you without saying a huge thank you to Fiona, your wife and your family, and also to the church at the gate in Reading uh, for all the ways that they have released you and supported you as president. Um, we just want to say thank you to them too uh, for all the ways that they've made this year possible. So thank you, Yinka. We want love to just bless you now, offer you this blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you even closer to him. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your soul. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Bless you. Well, I am delighted to announce as well that one of the things we do at this time is we will not only honour the president who's going out and pray for the president that is starting, but we also announce who has been uh, elected as this year's vice president. And I'm absolutely delighted to announce that this year's vice president has been discerned among us to be the Reverend Hayley Young. And we look forward to welcoming her uh, later. Thank you very much. Now, as I said, I'm delighted to be welcoming our incoming president now, and that is the Reverend Jeff Colmer. Welcome, Jeff. Jeff has been uh, regional minister team leader for our Central Baptist Association since 2004. Uh, formerly a professional musician, he's served widely across Baptist together uh, throughout his ministry, and he also has participated in the founding of the Order of Baptist Ministry. Jeff, your focus this year is going to be on uh, being attentive to the rhythms of grace, but uh, in in similar yet different ways, um, your year as vice president has also been nothing like you expected in the same similar ways as it has for Yinka. I'm just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about what's been the unexpected for you and what your hopes are for your year as president. Thank you, Lynn. Um, this year has been challenging for all of us, and um, uh, I've, I've just had a, another dimension to that challenge. Um, last uh, June, I began to develop acute back pain, and uh, in July, I was admitted to hospital um, where I was diagnosed with uh, multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. Um, it had affected my back and uh, I was in hospital for six weeks and when I emerged from hospital uh, I needed to wear a, a back brace which came right up to my chin um, and I wore that for 12 weeks and um, at the same time I um, uh, I received uh, in, an intensive uh, chemotherapy uh, that finished at the end of uh, at the end of November beginning of December and um, the good news is that I'm in remission from this condition. This condition ultimately is untreatable, is un incurable, but it is highly treatable. And I'm presently in remission. And uh, actually, at this point, I'm just about to undergo um, stem cell transplant, which will take me out of things for a while longer. Um, but I hope to return and to be uh, uh, to be in a really good place. Um, for the presidency. It's likely to take a slower start, but uh, I, I hope that I'm going to be able to fulfil um, the privilege and uh, the responsibility of this role. As for my hopes um, for the coming year, um, I mean, firstly, I hope to be well enough and mobile enough to uh, engage with uh, people and with churches throughout Baptists together. Um, at my my hope for myself is that I will be attentive to rhythms of grace. That's been very challenging during this last year. Um, but it struck me that um, uh, in our vulnerability, that can be a place where um, actually God does come close by his grace. And um, certainly my experience is that I've, um, I, I've had those other dimensions of God's presence that previously I I hadn't experienced and uh, amidst all the darkness um, of this last year um, for me there's been a, a profound sense of of God's um, of God's presence which has at times been beautiful and very precious and something that I've I've really held on to so attentive to rhythms of grace comes in many many different ways and I need to ensure that I'm attentive to rhythm rhythms of grace uh, and I'm open to how this might be expressed in the year to come. 
It seems that as we continue to emerge out of the pandemic, we will be in a period of uncertainty and uh, to some degree continued unpredictability. And uh, I think the pressure will be to rush back into things. I'm going to need a slow start because of my condition, but I think that many of our churches will will need to take things easily and not uh, rush back into just doing what we've previously done before. So my hope for, for the coming year is that there will be that attentiveness among us. Firstly, because many people will need time to recover. Um, this last year has been harrowing uh, with so many deaths and so much uh, continued uh, uh, illness from COVID-19 and many, many other um, aspects of, of how this uh, pandemic has affected us. We will need time to recover and in that recovery, um, attentiveness to rhythms of grace will be will be paramount. And we'll also need to be attentive to rhythms of grace because finding ourselves in this place presents an opportunity to afresh uh, discern who we are uh, and what we do. Um, my hope for this year is that I and uh, we as Baptists together will have that openness because we don't know what the year ahead is going to be like. Um, but as we're open to rhythms of grace, then uh, I'm sure that God will surprise us uh, repeatedly. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you for sharing about your uh, unpredictable, unexpected year. Um, as you say, I think uh, we go into a new year and a new presidency trusting that God knows uh, in the same way as the Inca was the right person for the right season, that uh, it, it will also be with you. You are the right person for the right season and we trust that God is at work in and through that. So, Jeff, your gifts and your spiritual leadership have been recognised among us and we are calling you to serve as our president. And I just like to ask you um, the presidential promise now, if I may. As you share in the building up of the common life of Baptist together and the faith and mission that lie at the heart of our movement, will you commit yourself to serving God as our president? Will you be diligent in service, faithful in offering inspiration and encouragement? And will you support and pray for us all to enable us to grow healthy churches in relationship for God's mission. I will, God's spirit empowering me. And I'm sure he will. Um, Yinka is going to pray for you now. We thought that was a good kind of handover. So please lead us in prayer, Yinka. Yinka, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for Jeff, for his willingness to serve in the way that he has uh, offered himself as president of our practice here, Lord. And, and Father, we, we pray. We pray for him, for his family. We pray for his health. Father, we pray, Lord, that in this time of reflecting, which many of us need to do, that you would give him the wisdom that he needs to be able to impart uh, to us. Father, we thank you. Uh, Lord, for his pastoral heart, for his compassion, and for the many years of service that he's already discharged. But now, Father Lord, this is a new season. And even as he had quite openly reflected on the challenges that he had walked through in season eight, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will indeed teach us, uh, in inform us, and Lord, through him, Father Lord, bring us into deeper unity as a movement. So Lord, bless him, watch over him, and Lord, you know what strength he needs to discharge this responsibility. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that's gonna take you by surprise. Therefore, Father Lord, you, you, will, you will guide him and lead him according to your goodwill and your good purposes. So Lord, we bless Jeff, we bless his family, and we thank you, Lord, that now as we receive him as our incoming president, as our, our president of our wonderful union, we thank you, Father Lord, uh, that he will surprise us and uh, it, it encourage us uh, in this season we're moving into. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Yinka. 
So we're grateful to you, Yinka, that you'll continue to serve for a further year as our past president. And I invite all of you to join with me uh, in continuing to pray for President Jeff as the year unfolds. Jeff, Yinka, may the Lord bless you both with his presence and peace and empowering in all that lies ahead. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Lynn, for uh, overseeing that presidential handover. It wouldn't be this year, would it be, if uh, there wasn't at least one instance where somebody was talking on mute. So uh, my thank you to Jeff and uh, Yinka for their leadership. Um, apologies, we've had in chat that there are one or two of you who've had a couple of issues with voting on Slido. My, my apologies if that's been a problem. And then the other thing I'd like just to to note and to thank is that there's been a vote of thanks from the floor via the, via the chat to give a special thanks to the work of the specialist teams uh, over this last year. I think the uh, number of times that the website, the Bugby website, which, which must have been groaning this year with the amount of guidance and the speed at which it has been kept up to date, just a, a vote of thanks for the uh, great work that the specialist teams have done in supporting the whole Baptist family. So uh, I'm sure everybody would want to join us in recognising that. I've heard that so many times repeated uh, right across the Baptist family. So we do, I do want to record uh, the thanks of the whole movement to the specialist teams um, led by Lynn uh, for how they've served over this last year. So I'm going to hand over to Lynn who's going to close the meeting now in prayer. Thank you Alistair um, for that vote of thanks. I know the specialist teams will really appreciate that and uh, it, we, we, we sometimes get people actually emailing in and saying thank you and I always share that at the staff meeting um, because it's good uh, when you work a little bit more back room to actually hear some specific feedback so thank you for that. We're going to close now in prayer so uh, please join me in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We worship you for your faithfulness. Thank you for all the ways that you have been with us in this past year. The ways that we anticipated and you came good again and again. The ways that we could never have imagined, Lord. And yet through all sorts of challenges and joys, you have upheld us and sustained us. And we thank you and praise you for that. Lord, we just want to continue to pray and welcome you into our movement, Lord. Would you help us to really fix our eyes on you? Lord, we just lift to you now our churches, missional communities, um, all our ministers and leaders in all the different uh, places that they serve, our local leaders. We pray for our associations and all the life there is regionally. We pray for our colleges. And again, we pray for the specialist teams. Lord, thank you that you have pulled us together for a time such as this. Deepen our bonds of fellowship in Christ. Deepen our sense of covenant, Lord. Help us to rejoice in our diversity, to celebrate that, and to just glorify you through that, Lord, we pray pour out your spirit upon us. Help us, as Jeff is encouraging us, to be attentive um, to the voice of your spirit and to your grace, not just within us and between us, but also in our communities. Lord, may we perceive what you are doing and join you there. Anoint us afresh with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We are here for you. We just make room for you. So come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Fill us afresh for all that lies ahead. And I just want to thank and pray a blessing again, Lord, on all those who serve us in all the different ways right across Baptist together. Lord, may each one know you're well done right now. Would you encourage and bless each one? And would they know your presence close to them? Lord, in all things, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to keep in step with your spirit. And may we glorify you in these days. Amen. Amen.